Hi, today we're talking about human-centered change with Graham Borbell. The pandemic has obviously uh, impacted how we see change. Well, I think the pandemic taught, taught us two things. But first of all, that, that radical change was possible. You know, we used to do it this way and then suddenly we're doing it completely differently. Um, and also that, that, that some big scale change can happen really quickly. So it is possible for organisations, for individuals, for communities to change. You know, we just need to have the, the right motivations and the right conditions in place to do so, I guess. And, and the two things that I think about is urgency. Yeah. That's what, from, you know, pandemic, that was the urgency to change, especially in terms of, you know, coming up with a vaccine. That, that managed to happen and that wasn't the yeah. uh, single point leader or owner for that issue. No, that's right. Why, what happens in organisations? Why do we fail? I mean, the simple way of thinking about it for me is, is that if any change initiative that an organisation is undertaking isn't designed to make the organisation more human, then it's, it's, not, it's simply not going to work. Um, so to put that another way, the only change that does work is to try and make the organisation more human. In fact, I would say that that's the only change that counts. Um, so when you when you when when um, organisations are thinking about changes that they want to make, mm. uh, or things that 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 you know th circumstances that they need to respond to and so on with change initiatives, then I think they've got to put humanity at the heart of it. Because if you if you step back again into the pandemic, mm. that's that's what that was about. You know, that was about our essential humanity. It was about you know, survival. It was a, it was about people's health, uh, and so it was it was our humanity putting our humanity at the heart of the need to to respond to the virus that led to this huge shift in the way in which society works almost overnight. Um, so I think that's the key lesson for organisations: start and end with humanity. And that's, that's why we're that's failing, going. because we, we don't, we're often not starting with humanity. Are we starting with a need to be more effective, more efficient, yeah, yeah. And, to drive and, better systems or yeah. approaches? And so, and so the way that works is, is, that, is that people that are kind of mandating change or you know, making, making the decisions that change needs to happen are then trying to instruct that. You know, they're trying to say, right, well, this is what, we, you know, this is what we're going to do. Um, and... You know, one, again, one of the lessons for the pandemic is, is mm. that, you know, the best examples of government responses to the pandemic were all about communication, were all about involving people, were all about connecting, you know, the, the, the pandemic to people's lives and so on. Um, and so, again, there's, there's lots of read across into organisations, you know, in relation to change. You know, involve the people that need to change, you know, so they're, they're doing the work they're doing the work that, that is going to be impacted by this change, then get them to design the change. That's what's going to work. The more that, that, um, that senior managers and leaders take the responsibilities on themselves to mandate this change and try and push it through, through a kind of command and control uh, system, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't work that well or, or that often or at all. Uh, and the more that they try and engage and involve the people that are going to be impacted by this change in the design of that change itself, you know, the more likely it is that it's going to succeed. You've kind of touched on it, but what are a few kind of ideas or examples or approaches that uh, that people might be able to use if they were trying to think about a, a human-centered approach to change? What what kind of uh, pointers could you give them? Well, I think that there's two things really. The first one is to um, is to is to acknowledge. Another kind of simple truth that that unless um, work is changing, so unless either what is done or how it is done is changing, mm -hmm. then no meaningful change is either designed or is happening. So, in other words, real change happens in real work, um, and that seems like really obvious, but it doesn't seem to be that well understood or that well practiced mm. across uh, a range of change initiatives. So, and, and often it's because the, the, the changes that need to take place might be really small okay. um, or they might be really complex. You know, you can't, you know, back to our poor point about ecology again, thinking about the science of consequences, 
is if you change this bit, what's the implications for you know all of the things that are connected to that? You need to be able to think that through. Um, and the best people to think that through are the people that are operating those systems on the ground, not people trying to take a you know helicopter view of it because it requires a kind of granular approach. So that's the first thing is a real change happens in r- real work. And then the second thing, uh, as we've said, is is that is that change is fundamentally about learning. So unless we can learn, we can't change. Mm. Um, so fundamental to any uh, change process has to be a learning process. And we would say, um, certainly from a human centric point of view, that the that at the core of effective organisational change is new learning, not reinforcing how we used to do things or not reinforcing um, uh, you know, uh, you know, our current, our current worldview or the status quo and so on, but learning new things that shake us out of our kind of complacency, out of our, you know, standard mm. approaches and so on, and open up new possibilities. And that's where effective change is going to come from, change that not only happens, but is also effective in delivering whatever it is that you wanted to try and achieve, you know, when you set out on this change journey. So it sounds like... Um we, the the problem with um, embedding a new change process is the fact that we're not thinking about it from a kind of human centered approach. We're thinking about it yep. from a mechanistic, yep. uh, and that within organisations it's happening or it's being directed at a level within the organisation who don't necessarily understand the complexities or the impacts of any changes that may happen. Yeah, and human centred right. organisations are ones who are able to. Um, think about change with, through the lens of people and engaging people in it. I wonder if you've got any examples of organisations that you see uh, as being able to do this or having gone through this process. I think that that some of the some of the more successful examples that I can think of are where organisations have um, have experimented or implemented sort of new ways of thinking about organisational design. Mm. So it's very difficult to implement the sort of change processes that we're talking about, human-centric, you know, rooted in the work, rooted in the in, in the people that are doing the work, doing the change, and rooting that in learning. It's very difficult to do that in a in a, a very very hierarchical mm. organisation. So at the heart of human-centric change is putting the people mm. that you want to change in charge of designing and learning so that they do the change, if you see what I mean. So Opposed to change that needs to be happened that's coming from other parts of the organisation and telling people how they need to change and yeah. then hopefully by that painful process people coming out and going, oh, look, we're doing new things and <laughs> that was painless because that doesn't happen. You know, how many, we know that so many change processes uh, fail yeah. And perhaps one of the reasons why you suggested is because we don't take a human-centric approach to change, which is about yeah. enabling those people who are going through the change process to be to lead in that process yeah, or I mean, be part of that process. Yeah, too too many organisations just don't see that as the as still yeah as the way as the way in which it works. Um, so you know the the process of designing uh, and then mandating change and so on is you know happens at a particular place in an organization at a senior level and so on, and then that's driven through. Um, and, uh, you know, there's been lots of observations around change initiatives, and so as you say, lots of evidence that, that, you know, that our attempts at organizational change tend not to work. And I think fundamental to that is this idea that people don't resist change, they resist being changed. In the end, the best people to improve the way in which an organisation works in some ways, the people are actually doing mm-hmm. that work in the first place because they know it best. So why not put those people in charge of improving it and, and changing it in that way? But there's something about the kind of managers and leaders that think that, that you know, that that's too dangerous, it's going to take too long. Um, the people on the ground, you know, the, the, you know, they're not able to do these kind of things and so on, so they need to be controlled. Whereas all our experience is that that's not the case. The more that you give them the power, the more that they'll take it, mm. and the more that you'll you'll get the results as a result of them growing and learning as they understand how to, you know, how to improve their bit of the organisation. And the other feature of organisations that are successful is that is they understand 
that learning is at the heart of it. So, so what they've done is have established a kind of culture of learning, often in the B Corp movement, for example, that you know where they're, they're thinking very differently about you know their ecology and their impact on you know wider society, on the economy, and so on, on the, on the environment. You know where, where they're, they're taking that responsibility very seriously and thinking, therefore, very differently about how they design their organisation in order to live, deliver the, the B Corp objectives. But, but providing that we, that we do that in a way that's safe so that you, know, you can still fail as long as you're learning and so on, then organisations can, you know, can successfully profit from that learning culture so that they continue to adapt and change. Thank you for watching and if you would like to download the white paper, you can do so in the link in the description.